Welcome in the session of engineering materials and metallurgy. Today we will discuss about the topic uh, crystallization. So the pure metal may crystallize in three branches or three branch pattern from nuclei. Such formation is called as a dendritic. So here in diagram you can clearly see the initially uh, there will be the molten liquid and uh, nucleation or nuclear formation of the crystallization will get starts in this first diagram after that further growth of the nuclei occurs so the dendritic structure will get formed so due to the cooling of the molten liquid from melting point or below melting point so that is called as a freezing so here further cluster formation of the nuclei will get starts further growth of the nuclei will get happen and grains are produced after that the grains are separated or arranged in a definite manner with the help of grain boundary so the last product of the solidification is the solid so here it is the grains are packed with the help of grain boundary and the final structure with the zero amount of the liquid is called as a solid so here in this uh, stage the solidification starts then this stage is the growth of the solidification with the freezing effect due to the freezing effect and finally we are having the solid metal or component so crystallization it is usually occurs during solidification of alloys because of the constitutional supercooling the dendritic or dendrite structure can be seen after etching and polishing of alloy the extension or elevated areas that is a term as a from the soft soft so spontaneously on the advancing front of the solidifying metal and grow into region of negative temperature gradients the latent heat released by the solidifying metal also lowers the amount of supercooling at the liquid solid interface then hindering growth in a region adjacent to the protuberance and resulting in separated highly elongated crystal so here in this uh, diagram you can clearly see the formation of the solid from the liquid so the mold is pro, uh, given that is a container zone and the chill zone is there then equiax zone is there and sprinkle zone is there so this is the formation of the crystal that is a crystallization for the homogeneous process or homogeneous or due to the homogeneous nucleation or solidification process so here base metal alloys are the dendritic microstructure while noble metal alloys are equiax grain structure in the previous diagram so in crystallization growth starts from center of nuclei and crystal grow towards each other when two or more crystal collides their growth is stopped finally the entire space is filled with crystals this article shows that the incident of the hot tears in a high palladium alloy with a dendritic as a cast microstructure is much greater when the alloy is quenched rather than the bench cooled the path of crack propagation is between adjacent inter dendritic regions next is the grains so grains are the important for the physical properties of alloy because grain size influence other clinker properties so when a molten alloy cools to the solid state crystals forms around tiny nuclei that is a cluster of atoms next is the grain boundaries as the temperature drops these crystals grow until the 
crystal boundaries meet each other in the solid state. At this point, each crystal is called a grain and the boundaries between crystal are grain boundaries. So the size of the grains depends on the cooling rate, alloy composition, presence of grain refiners and other factors. So here in this diagram, you can clearly see the arrangement of the grains with the help of the grain boundary. So this dark line is called as a grain boundary and these elements are called as a grains with the various sizes. So the size of the grains depends on the cooling rate and then composition of the alloying elements, then presence of grain refineries or refiners and other factors. So the grain boundaries form a natural barrier to the movement of the dislocations. The concentration of grain boundaries increases as the grain size decreases. Metals with finer grain structures are generally harder and have higher values of yield stress than those of with coarse grain structure. Then grain refiners in some alloys, <coughs> fine particles of high melting point elements such as IR are added to encourage even nucleation throughout the alloy. These particles used in this manner are called as a grain refiners. The process of reducing the crystal size that is a grain size in a solid metal by adding an element or compound to the molten metal and cooling at a pre-described rate. So iridium ruthenium and rhenium are noble metal alloys. So these are called as a grain refiners. For dental based metal casting alloys in which nickel cobalt, iron and titanium are the principal elements, the use of grain refining elements has not been reported. Then fine grain alloys are generally more desirable for dental applications because they have a more uniform properties. So it has been shown that a small amount of boron addition induces a significant refinement of as a cast structure and improvement of mechanical properties. This is a primary due to the role of the borides precipitate in the period or the prior beta boundary and refinement of the prior beta grains. So cast titanium boron alloys with a good combination of greater tensile ductility and strength can be obtained with a very low boron addition. So under normal condition, the grain structures of alloy is not visible. So the special acid etching and magnifications are generally necessary to view the grains. Then microstructure. So the alloy microstructure is viewed by polishing the alloy surface then etching with an acid to bring out relevant features. Next is a, a series of successively finer abrasive, typically aluminum, oxide and silicon carbide are employed. Initial grinding stage, abrasive embedded in polishing papers. Then later polishing stage, that is a slurries of water and abrasive powders. And final polishing stage, an abrasive with a particle size of 0 0.05 micro meter is used since the width of the resulting sketches will be about an order of magnitude smaller than the wavelength of visible light and thus they will not be visible by eye or in the optical microscope. The chemical or electrolyte etching medium preferentially remove atoms and creates grooves at the grain boundaries because of these atoms are in less regular arrangement and have a higher energy compared with atoms in the interior of the grains. As a consequence, the grain boundaries have a darker appearance than the bulk grains in the optical microscope because of light scattering by these grooves. So repeated remelting of the base metal alloy for a dental casting without addition of the new alloy can affect the mechanical properties of the alloy. So the microstructure analysis shows the orientation upon remelting. However, the addition of the 25% to 50% of new alloy to the 
remade alloy can bring about improvement both in mechanical properties and in microstructure. Next is the grain size. The linear intercept method can be used to estimate the grain size of an alloy. Random li lines of known length such as 10 cm are placed on the series of photo micrographs obtained at the standardized magnification for the polished and each alloys. So the number of grain boundaries intercepts per centimeter will be the total number of grain boundary intercept point divided by the total length of the lines used into magnification. The reciprocal of number of the reciprocal of this number is used as a measure of the grain size, which is usually expressed in microns. So the grain size a fine grain structure can achieved by rapid cooling of a molten metal or alloy following the casting. This process often referred as the quenching ensure that many nuclei of crystallizations are formed resulting in large number of relatively small grains. So slow cooling causes relatively few nuclei to be formed which results in the larger grain size. Some metals and alloys are said to be have a refined grain structure. Fine grain structure is achieved by seeding the molten material with the additive metal which forms the nuclei for crystallization. So the atoms within each grains are arranged in a regular three dimension lattice. There are several possible arrangements such as cubic or BCC or FCC structure. So here in diagram, you can see the simple cubic structure formation, body center close pack and face centered close pack crystal structure. So this is the optical microscopic image of polished and each palladium based alloy with the identity as a cast microstructure. So this is the microstructure of palladium based alloy. So here you can see the dendritic structure of the uh, cast microstructure in this diagram. Then second one, this is a SEM image of fracture surface of cast based metal alloy for removable partial dendritic frameworks showing crack propagation in dendritic microstructure. So this is the second image of the uh, showing the fracture surface of cast based metal. Then this is a SEM scanning electron microscopy image of each and polished high palladium alloy with an equiax fine grain. So this is again a grain structure for or arrangement of the microstructure or the microstructure of the palladium alloy. So thank you for watching the topic microstructure, grain size and crystallization.